here at the Rovaniemi office. And uh, so my topic today is a GG case example of this national G data delivery solutions. So um, So what I'm going to uh, tell you today, first, uh, GTKs, I'm going to represent GTKs online services. Then I'll show a few examples of GeoData behind the services. Uh, then I uh, explain a little bit more of two spatial data products, Petrock of Finland and Mineral Prospectivity Modeling. And then I have the point of contact at the end. So first, uh, GTK's online services. Uh, Geo.fi, this is a portal that brings together all Finnish geoscientific data. So if you don't remember anything else from our web services or online services, uh, remember this because through this portal you can access all our services. And in this uh, presentation, I will concentrate on, on these three uh, types of online services. We have the downloading services, map services, and then interface services. And first, our downloading service, Hakku. Uh, this is how the Hakku looks like when you enter it. And as told, it is a downloading service. It includes uh, spatial data products, metadata, reports, publications, posters, maps and maps, map drawings, photos. And the majority of the data is free of charge. And, but there is also online store included for data purchasing. And uh, here, a few words about our spatial data products. So in, in Hakku, there is 102 spatial data products available and 95 of them are free of charge and 35 are available with GTK's open license. And uh, when, I speak, when we speak about spatial data products, um, we mean that all geodata uh, we have, it goes through this uh, process, we call it productization, before it is published on our online services. And uh, in this productization process, uh, we give guidelines, certain formalities, quality criteria have been defined uh, regarding metadata, coordinate system, format, attributes, fields and dataset names. So, uh, as a uh, result of this process, we have this unified appearance in all of our uh, online services. And of course, this productization, it's only top of the iceberg. Everything is based on high quality data collection procedures. Uh, here, this is from Hakku, like, one item selected, Petrock of Finland, scale free. So this is how it looks like. There is a small abstract in here that describes the product. Then we have the file formats and coordinate systems. And uh, then metadata. Here's a hyperlink to metadata. Licenses are here. Then you can see in which channels the same product is, is um, available. And here, if you click download, then you go to the shopping cart and, and you can, uh, you get the links to your email. Then I have uh, map services. So we have several kinds of uh, map services um, for different kind of purposes. And of course, all are maintained on regular basis. And the data products in Hakku and in map services, they are the same. And uh, we have large amount of observation and measurement data 
and related interpretations in our map services. And I have here two examples, mineral deposits and exploration and Petrok of Finland. So mineral deposits and exploration, it's designed for mineral exploration purposes. And it, it, it includes mineral deposits, mines, exploration layers, permit areas, nature conservation areas. Uh, so there is really a lot of uh, information in this, in this map service available. And it contains many useful features like the search function. Uh, then we have this Petrok of Finland. So this map service, you can search and view information on lithological units of Petrok of Finland product. Uh, you can enter this uh, geological unit regist register of Finland. We call it Finstrati. And through these hyperlinks, you can actually access electronic publications and references describing these lithological units. And this hierarchical geological unit register, it is uh, consistent with the international standards and vocabularies. Uh, here I have a picture of uh, Petrok of Finland. So um, as you can see, there is this hi hi hierarchy. And uh, then here, if you click these links, hyperlinks, then you can access this actual um, description of these lithological unit and, and also the references to the publications. Uh, then interface services. So uh, CTK also provides uh, uh, many interface services and um, to these you can uh, connect with uh, spatial data software and you can either uh, view data or download data. And uh, the use of our interface services is free of charge, so there is no need to create an account, uh, although you have to agree to the terms and conditions of use. And our interfaces are based on WMS and WFS standards. And we have these uh, services, for example, for geophysics, bedrock, uh, rock material resources, soil, and ground surveys uh, themes. And uh, these uh, links to these um, interface services you can find either from Hakku or from geo.fi. Then um, here's a couple of few examples of this geodata behind the services. So uh, we have bedrock drilling and bedrock observations. So uh, bedrock drilling uh, it contains information about, uh, on about uh, 34,000 drill holes, and it includes color, survey, lithology, analysis data. And uh, the bedrock observation uh, data set includes um, about 670,000 observation points. And, and there is also available lithological, structural, sam you know, hand samples, information, and analysis data. And then we have a couple of other examples. We have rock geochemical data that covers the whole Finland with uh, 6,500 analyzed, analyzed samples. And then we have this archive thin and polished sections that includes uh, about yeah. 130,000 records. Uh, then we have this uh, RO geophysical surveys that cover the whole country. And uh, we have aeromagnetic, aeroelectromagnetic, and aeroradiometric maps. And in, in Hakku, and the, we have both these uh, maps, and then we have these. Uh, grids also available. Then we have crown geophysical surveys. Uh, we have tens of millions of survey points in database and uh, methods. We have magnetic, slingram, uh, VLF, Maxmin, 
we say a la masse, induced polarization, self potential, and gravimetric. And then we have soil samples and geochemistry. We have this regional tilt geochemistry that covers the whole country and contains over 80,000 uh, samples. And then we have this targeting tilt geochemistry, stream sediment geochemistry, and then we have these detailed samplings uh, with uh, about 850,000 samples. And we have some analytical, analytical powders and fine fractions available for some parts too, for free assay, assay. Then uh, let's go a little bit deeper in a couple of our products. So we have this Petrock of Finland. It's seamless, scale-free Petrock map dataset covering the whole Finland. And we have a generalized uh, data sets also available in scales 1 to 200,000 and 1 to 1 million. And uh, the bedrock of Finland, it includes these layers, lithological unit polygons, structural lines, dikes, dike swarms, form lines, black shales, and then there is this metadata layers that's, that uh, describe the data origin and quality of the data. And the same product, it's uh, available via several channels. So it, it's available in this uh, Petrock of Finland map service. Then it's available in mineral and deposits map service, mineral deposits and exploration map service. Then it's available for downloading in Haku service. And then it's also available in as interface service. And more details about this Petrock of Finland. So this scale-free data set was created um, by digitizing all existing Petrock map material we had. And, and all these maps, they were digitized. And of course, the data was ev evaluated and the map sheets were combined. And, and then the map material was updated with other geodata. Uh, like uh, bedrock observation data, geophysical maps, and also data from other organizations has been used. And uh, then this robust data model, util utilizing these uh, international geoscientific standards and vocabularies was created, and this material was adapted to this data model. And then this high hierarchical lithological unit register FinStrati was created. And then these metadata layers were created. And, and finally, the map visualization, spatial, this productization and, and the web services were, were done. And um, I just want to tell that each of these uh, tasks has been a significant work. And the compilation of the data set, it has required years of work with high expertise and cooperation between organizations. And uh, the content of this Petrock of Finland uh, and the data model, they have been continuously developed to more comprehensive and new data layers have been added. And the latest, Hans George, you mentioned this uh, publication that Jarmo had sent to you. Uh, it, it's, it's the latest uh, step in this development process. So this was only this publication was released in uh, June this year. Uh, then I have other example of a spatial data product, mineral prospectivity modeling. And uh, here is a slide tells a little bit more about this uh, issue. So we have lots of digital data and maps, and, and this allows this quantitative analysis of data and uh, numerical modeling. And, and the end um, result is this mineral prospectivity maps. And uh, the purpose is to delineate areas favorable for mineral exploration. 
And uh, we have this product, Mineral Prospectivity Modeling, and it includes models published by researchers. And so the same product, it's available in Mineral Deposits and Exploration Map Service, and then it's available for downloading in Haku Service. And uh, the idea of this uh, product is that we have this uh, extent layer, which includes uh, model specific metadata. And then through this layer, you can access and download individual files. And we are planning the similar solution for distribution of 3D models. But that is still uh, ongoing, not finished yet. And here is an example, like how it looks like in the uh, map service. So here we have the extent layer with the, uh, with the metadata. And then through that, you can actually uh, check and, and download these individual uh, models as uh, Im imaging files. Uh, well, then I'm the presentation is, is near ending. So uh, we do offer a variety of expert servicing services covering data management and data analysis. And uh, in case you have any questions, we have this uh, our customer service regarding geodata, geodata at ggk.fi. So uh, we have this 10 minutes for questions, but in case you have anything you want to know later, then you can contact this e email. And of course, if you want more details, you can also contact our uh, head of unit, Nina Ahtonen. And that was about it. Thank you for everyone for listening. And now if you have questions, okay. I can try to ask, uh, answer. Thank, thank you, Katya. I now will uh, stop the record. Um, the the recording. Um, hello, everybody. Um, my name is uh, Martin Schickel, and I'm uh, head of uh, the Department of uh, Geoinformation and responsible for. Um, I, um, Hans Georg, can you hear me? Is it okay? Then? Yes, yes, it's okay. Yes, okay. I can hear you. Uh, yeah, yeah, perfect. Um, and uh, I'm uh, head of the Department of Geo Information, responsible of, uh, for data management in the Geological Survey of Austria. And uh, my presentation uh, will be slightly different than uh, to the presentation of Katja. It will be uh, more technical, maybe, and uh, will uh, focus especially on map data and uh, from, from our mapping department. Um, I will. Uh, I would like to start with an overview and uh, some ex examples. Uh, the the data delivery of our geological survey uh, is not only always uh, from from our side, from our institution. Uh, uh, some other institutions they provide uh, data uh, from us or. Um, directly related uh, to our data, for example, topographical data, which is very important uh, for the mapping, uh, map production, things like this, uh, and also um, environmental data and geological data. And uh, the data uh, itself, what we um, what we uh, offer for the customers from directly from our institution, uh, we had a very strong focus uh, last year on Inspire. And as Christine already asked, uh, a lot of people were working uh, for Inspire services, Inspire implementation. That was very important uh, during this year. And um, then beyond Inspire, of course, we have a lot of other web services um, uh, just related to the, the Inspire uh, services. Uh, then also, um, I think last week, uh, we, uh, we put online a new newly created uh, research data repository uh, 
uh, which is very important for us in the future to store uh, data, to publish data and um, uh, make it available for the customers. Then uh, one module is always uh, for us uh, vocabulary data, what we use uh, not um, the relational databases, we use graph databases, link data uh, for the vocabulary management. Then, of course, library data and uh, the data collections, scan, archive, uh, all these PDFs, JPEGs uh, are important. And then we have other sites, websites uh, where we serve uh, data from us, like uh, on the web page. Uh, uh, the, the web shop and uh, web applications. And of course, uh, customers uh, and stakeholders would get uh, information and data um, just on request uh, from the internal databases like uh, the electronic field book or the uh, central database where the uh, compilation of all this map mapping data is, is inside uh, samples and analyzes. And of course, uh, there are a lot of data set search solutions online. Um, when I started with Inspire, there's, um, we, we are online with, I think, 13 data sets on an Inspire portal, which is also available via the Austrian Inspire portal. Then we have our own, our own uh, catalog service and EGDA is, is uh, for example, another option. And then we have this library catalog, open access catalog uh, to get this library data. And uh, we are part of this open government data portal in, in Austria as well. Um, I would like to start uh, just um, a, a very simplified workflow. Uh, how we proceed uh, when, when we start with map data sets, because this this presentation focuses especially on map data sets. Uh, we, we changed the workflow last year and um, the idea is uh, just uh, for the um, uh, field geologists uh, to put their data uh, directly in the new, newly created repository called TETIS. Uh, and then uh, this uh, data which is published in, in this repository, uh, it's uh, available in a very early stage uh, for our customers and stakeholders. And the next step would be uh, to integrate in our central database, uh, the so-called core data sets. And uh, this is a, a much more complicated um, um, data structure then. And out from these um, uh, core data sets, uh, we would put a selection for the newly uh, created uh, Inspire database, which is a PostgreSQL database and runs all these web services um, free uh, for, for open science. And um, these uh, red arrows would describe the workflow, what we plan to start now with uh, these new models. And of course, uh, other projects results uh, could uh, participate this structure and uh, there is also um, the EGDI infrastructure, especially from GeoERA and the follow-up project uh, CSA is uh, very interesting to integrate in this uh, kind of uh, infrastructure we want to start now. Uh, this slide just uh, again wants to uh, put the focus on, on the map uh, data we have because uh, all these geological maps are created on official, officially raster data sets uh, from the federal agency. And, uh, but, but if this data comes uh, online in web applications, web services, we would use uh, other uh, topography data like Google Maps, OpenStreetMaps, uh, and especially we have this base map dot at in, in Austria. Uh, this is next slide is uh, an example uh, where other institutions or other uh, portals serve our data. There's a water information system from uh, the Ministry of Agriculture, which shows our hydrogeological data sets, wells, uh, things like this. Uh, then uh, we have in Germany this uh, very huge uh, research data repository, Pangea. A lot of people publish their data sets in, in this uh, repository. And of course, again, uh, EGDI is building up its infrastructure, which is very important for us. Uh, next slide uh, shows um, this uh, focus on the Inspire implementation we had last year uh, to create uh, our core data sets. And especially for Inspire, uh, we developed uh, a simple uh, map viewer for all these people um, who, who cannot get um, ready with uh, using this Inspire data 
um, APIs and data formats uh, just to, to look at this um, data in, like in a map. And uh, we added this online viewer for Inspire datasets, which will be, I think, very important in the future for the acceptance of Inspire implementation. Uh, if it's about our web services we produce, uh, of course, uh, in the upper right, you, you see this um, uh, list of web services, what we have uh, on our homepage. Uh, these web services are connected with a very simple uh, map viewer, just to view this one uh, map service. We, we use this construction, for example, for the uh, for the cross sections, um, which serves just uh, images of different cross sections in, in Austria, uh, which are generated directly uh, out of the service. And uh, in the, on the left side of the screen here, you see a web page uh, where we implemented a monitoring of the web service because uh, of course we, we want to have this quality to, to have these uh, web services online uh, 24 hours, seven days a week. Yes, uh, yeah, and, and then the next slide um, is, is the, the module, which, which is really very, uh, very new, just uh, we put online, I think, uh, last week, and it still has some uh, bug fixes uh, to, to, to repair. Uh, but uh, this is a, um, a research data repository where all our scientists and mapping geologists uh, directly can publish their data. Uh, in a fair way, yeah? that means um, findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable data according to the, um, to the Research Data Alliance rules. Yeah? And therefore, we, we had to implement a data site schema, a metadata schema, in order to support the DOI system, Digital Object IDs, uh, in cooperation with the Technical University in Vienna which also includes uh, a machine readable access uh, from open, open archive initiatives for harvesting. That means uh, this uh, research data repository is part of the, um, of the international research data infrastructure and all our data we publish in this repository can be harvested uh, and uh, is findable in other uh, portals as well. But now we started this um, research data repository just with um, data we, we have produced in our institute. Uh, then another point uh, for the um, data delivery is, of course, our uh, GPA thesaurus, the controlled vocabularies, which um, are changed to a, a kind of a knowledge base. And um, this knowledge base uh, is a, a triple store working with linked data in, uh, and all this concept published in this knowledge base um, uh, is uh, in two languages, in German and English. Um, and it's a knowledge representation of our institution. It also has um, a machine readable access uh, by a Sparkle endpoint is a, for the programmers uh, is a REST API to, to get this content. Uh, to keep the quality on a scientific level, all these concepts we publish, um, uh, they uh, must have um, citations, scientific citations, and uh, already published uh, are seven topics uh, from lithological units uh, uh, to structural uh, units uh, to uh, mineral resources, um, uh, altogether seven topics. And uh, if we publish these concepts and they are uh, inspire or GeoSIML code lists, of course, uh, these concepts are mapped. So everybody who uses these vocabularies automatically has mapped this data to inspire or GeoSIML code lists. Uh, next slide, uh, of course, we develop a lot of web application. You can see from, from the left um, are these multi-layer uh, geological maps. Um, I think Hans Georg already presented. In, um, and this is um, um, visualization of the geological maps, um, geological units up to little tectonic units. Uh, then uh, we have a mineral resources application to show all these uh, uh, mineral resources in a separate uh, ArcGIS applications. And then new, uh, we also in, in, I think in the last months, uh, we put online a 
thin section fewer to few uh, different sites of thin sections. Uh, it was not from my department, it was from the Department of Mineral Resources. Um, and then last but not least, um, I think Clemens is also online. <laughs> I just put the screenshot. Um, uh, we are very hardworking on this new edition and new version of the GPA 3D viewer, uh, which also should be a contribution to the EGDI uh, infrastructure, but is still uh, as a better version, not ready uh, to go. And uh, finally, uh, in this um, PDF, uh, presentation I put a lot of links and uh, I will put a, a download a link for this uh, PDF presentation if you're interested in. Um, Hans Georg is some more time uh, to show online. Yes, uh, yep. there are five more minutes uh, five left more minutes. for you for presentations. Okay, uh, then now you see the um, uh, this um, research data repository uh, newly created. Um, we have um, uh, this uh, already registered as uh, DUI. Um, you have a description and um, the contents is um, a, a data description in both languages in English and German, uh, then a PDF preview. And uh, of course, the, uh, the uh, data download as a geo package according to an uh, open data policy. And then technical metadata. Um, this is um, an overview of the data. We just started putting um, publishing data into the data repository. And that's about the coverage of these uh, 1 to 50,000 50K uh, geological maps across Austria. And this will be. Uh, extended by uh, geofast um, publications also in the uh, map scale 1 to 50,000. So this should be completely cover uh, Austria with um, data downloads from each um, maps we publish. Uh, then Yeah, this is the uh, Inspire uh, data viewer uh, where the people very easy can access, for example, if they're interested in uh, one to 200,000, uh, 200 scale ethology, for example, just to uh, view this uh, data set from Inspire. And uh, this should be completely Inspire compliant uh, with in, in every step. This is the Inspire map viewer. Um, then uh, Thesaurus. Um, thesaurus um, application uh, link data vocabularies and this. Uh, we put a tutorial online on YouTube. So I will not um, go very much in detail for this. Uh, maybe just um, how to use if you are interested, for example, in energy. Uh, resources, energy, and minerals. Uh, you just go to the concept. Uh, you have a description. You have this uh, uh, code URI um, to um, specify the, the concept energy minerals. And uh, this is uh, consists of the different types. Um, and uh, there is a map view and the map download uh, selected by the uh, thesaurus. Uh, all these just takes a little time. Uh, all these occurrences um, of uh, energy resources we have in um, in Austria uh, with the links to the uh, interactive uh, raw minerals uh, management system and uh, it's download downloadable on the upper right as a shapefile. Um, where we can, where you can use in your GIS, then uh, in the same procedure, it's possible, for example, the uh, in, uh, if you're inter if you're interested, uh, sorry, if you're interested in the Vienna um, fault. 
Vienna Basin Fault System. Uh, you can see in the, in the controlled vocabulary, it's part of this large scale fault system. You just click on map download and you can uh, see this uh, large scale fault, sim, fault system of all consisting uh, fault structures. So that was uh, Soros. Then, of course, our homepage. Um, if there is time, we have a separate section uh, describing all these web services we have online. So, for example, if somebody is interested in uh, where it is, uh, let's take um, the 50k maps. Map, map visualization. Made with ArcGIS, uh, just to uh, show this map data. With uh, the very uh, universal map viewer. Um, then just want to show quickly the uh, IRIS uh, mineral um, raw mineral information system where you can uh, look at this data of raw minerals uh, in a detailed way with uh, geological background. This is uh, realized with ArcGIS Online. Then we have the multi-layer map geology and lithotectonic units. Yeah, I think that's, that should be enough. <laughs> So thank you very much for listening. And do you have any questions?